Coach. <laughs> Coach, the meeting that you guys had afterwards, the offensive line, what was kind of discussed and what needs to change in order to have a better product? Um, that, that meeting will stay in that room right through that wall. But thanks for asking. Thank you. <laughs> what was kind of the overall, te just the tone, or what, what's the message of what needs to happen in order to not have what happened on Friday again? That's a nice way of rewarding that. Thank you. That, that. That's excellent. Uh, that. Did you? <laughs> yeah, that meeting will stay in there. Why, why did you feel uh, there's the need to call it? Um, I just think at times, you know, when you know things don't go so well, obviously that uh, – you know, as a group, uh, getting together and making sure that uh, things don't overlap into the next day. I mean, there's a lot of uh, things. That's why they call it training camp. It's preseason games, but you don't take any opportunity to compete. Uh, you want to win, you know, and you want to do well. So I think really, you know, a lot of times, you know, they have a lot of rest and recovery and, and coach and, and all top and the, and the medical staff do such a terrific job with that, that, you know, when things go bad and then it's like, well, <laughs> you know, are you going to miss your rehab? You're going to miss your, your uh, recovery times because we're all upset. And so a lot of times it's, it's things like that, too, that just make sure we get on track and we come in, in the morning. We're all focused on what we need to do, myself to get better. Everyone you know, has, has fault in, in those type of things. And so that's why the meeting was called. But from what was in the meeting, I won't discuss. Have you ever done that before? Oh, yes, I have. Mm -hmm. The expectations, given you guys' the success last year, coming into this year were, were high. Do you think that too much stock is being put on what happened during that preseason game? Uh, no, ma'am, I don't believe so. I think, um, you know, how when you said they were, it's that, that was last year. And uh, the expectations are higher, in my opinion, and they know that. So expectations obviously weren't met. And so... Um, you know that that continued on with the with the uh, classroom watching the tape the next morning. I think it was Monday morning, right? Yeah. Right? No, we played on Sunday. Right? Whatever. Oh yeah, they had the Sunday off. Yeah, That's right. Off. Monday morning, and so we addressed everything then. What did you see when you watched the film? What, what the Fundamentals. Issue? I mean, we we were assignment sure. Um, there wasn't any uh, hesitation in and and making the right declarations and those things. So, you know, those are positives. Uh, there's always positives, some more than negatives, but it was it was fundamental football. You know, if you're pad, you know, pad level, everything to to uh, hand placement, to those type of things. So fundamentals uh, creeped up on us. I asked Thomas about the level of game level physicality uh -huh. that he wants to see. Um, and so how do you get the, your front line to get the physicality that they have in practice onto that game? You mean from Wednesday's practice when we played against them till then? Um, you know, I mean, again, it just, I, I, you know, it's a bunch of uh, new guys, a couple guys moving in some parts and things like that. And there's, there's, um, you know, if you're not playing fundamental football, and just, you know, it's really hard to be physical. <laughs> I mean, so you have to have everything in place, and, and uh, we worked hard at that today with the pads on. James, Frank said yesterday that part of the reason he's held off on declaring a starting right guard is you wanted to see Zavala and Jensen get back out there. How do you gauge what those guys can do in a short amount of time to be able to make that kind of determination? Um, I think, you know, just you have to take what body of work each player has and, and go with it. And so, um, you know, at that time when, when coach decides to, to pick, you know, the starting lineups, I'm sure he and uh, – Mr. Fitter will do that, um, then that's what it will be. What are you seeing from that group at, at right guard? I mean, I see a bunch of guys competing, you know, and I see, I see guys competing at other positions as well. I mean, um, it's a very competitive group. It's a, you know, we're young, but they're 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 eager, they're smart, they don't make mental errors, you know. Just we got to make sure that we're you know fitting up things together, you know, you know that. In other words, sometimes if, you, if you're used to writing with your right hand, then just keep writing with your right hand until we figure it out. Don't go left. Does that make sense? I mean, you can struggle. You can mess with yourself. And so um, sometimes that happens with in coaching is when you say, well, put them on the right, then put them on the left. And sometimes maybe it's better just to leave them at one spot. And that way they can shine. So um, those things factor in as well. Was there any correlation from what you saw Saturday to the first half of last year? Because guys spread the ball out, I mean the offense out a little bit last year, 
and struggled a little bit. Then when you tightened things up and went to the run game committed to it, it seems like that line really gelled. Um, was some of the flaws you saw on Saturday anything similar to what you saw last year? I, I don't remember. Nothing that would stand out for me. I've been told, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I've been told offensive linemen don't really hit their stride until year three or four. Is that is that your analysis? Um, you mean like individually, ma'am? Yes. Um, in some cases, it can be like that. It can. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it just depends on individuals. You know, it's like um, I've had players before that took like three years, and then all of a sudden, just where did it come from when you're getting ready to kind of go, well, maybe we should think about somebody else. But it's different for a lot, but I would say that's probably a fair assessment, you know, two to three, you know, and – and some of that too. I mean, you have to figure that out as a coach too. You have to. We have to bear some of that responsibility too. I mean, you know, Icky. I remember last year. I mean, I remember Darren and I having a conversation and saying, "My goodness, when's he going to win a one-on-one pass pro? It'll come," you know. And it did pretty good, right? And uh, I know Icky wouldn't be mad using him as a reference, but those are facts. But then he has Brian Burns rushing against him. Well, for goodness sakes, I mean, that's that's only a plus. And then he got, as we know, the first game he had the Garrett young man who's a dynamic. And then after that, he settled in and off he went, you know. So um, sometimes that can be the case. That's, that's very, that is very true. It takes two or three. Well, the reason why I asked was because what have you seen from Icky from, you know, when he came in last year? Up oh, he's now. progressing. He's, he's fine. He's done well. What, um, what's the update on Gabe May? Is he going to practice again? Um, I, that's a head coach's. Uh, conversation. I'm sorry. What do you want to see out of your line on Friday night? Um, improvement. I mean, really, and that's an, I know that's easy, and, I, and that's an easy answer. But I'm not, you know, skirting your question. But I, I think that you know, I, you know, you know, doing the things that they they know they can do, and, and and doing them well, and being fundamentally sound. And we're going up a different different front. It's. Uh, um, you know, the, the D coordinator over there is, gives you a lot of different things to look at, so that will be a new challenge for some of them. Um, but just being fundamentally sound and, and, and you know, being aggressive, that will create more aggressiveness and, and fly around and really have fun. I mean, sometimes, you know, to, you know, it, it, you, you overcoach things sometimes. I mean, I sat there and I, and, I, and, I, and I told the guys, hey, look, you know, I probably sat there and harped on, you know, holding calls and let's don't do any of that stuff. Sorry, I apologize. Don't do any of that stuff. And, and and then sometimes that can become a negative. It's like, hey, let me turn me loose. Let me take the handcuffs off. Let me go play, you know. And in your mind, it's like, well, crap, maybe I had a little bit of that, you know, where they're just making sure everything was set and that type of thing. But, um, you know, I just I'd like to see them have – I'd like to see them smile. So the smile you before and after. Sorry. You, you mentioned Icky and expectations. And settling in last year, the offense he was in last year – with as much as you guys ran the second half of the year, it seemed more natural for him and catered to his game. How has he kind of adapted to being in what is ostensibly going to be a more pass-heavy offense and different demands as a pass protector? I would not I would disagree with pass-heavy or run-heavy because I don't know. We only had one preseason game. We haven't figured out. I don't think exactly what we're going to be doing. But, from what he's shown you in some of those one-on-ones, whether it's against Justin, Brian, whoever this year, is he more polished as a pass protector oh, yeah. now? Mm-hmm. He's improving. You bet. He's improved. Yeah. James, I don't think you or not many people on the staff, I don't think, had worked with Thomas before. Your early impressions of him as a our OC? Um, Thomas. He's a stud. I mean, he, the guy commands a room. I mean, in a such a positive way with players. He commands a room with us as coaches, but in a positive way. I mean, he has a, um, maybe you don't see it, but he has, a, he has a really good sense of humor. I mean, he says some funny stuff now. I mean, <laughs> it's just like, where did that come from, you know? But he's got, he's got terrific command and he's, I mean, he's articulate. And I mean, and he just, he just speaks bang, bang, bang and gets off it. I mean, so he's, he's been really, Really terrific. He's he's a good man too. James, you were talking about you might have overcoached and guys might take the handcuffs off. We think let me go play. With the preseason game plan being as vanilla, how? I mean, that, that seems like those two things kind of fight against each other. No, Blood, no. Go loose or just be better. 
just to the third point, it'd be better at the fundamentals. It really the the play or the scheme or what we're trying to do is nothing to do with what um, I'm saying about just let them go play. It's just you know be aggressive, turn it loose, and it's okay to swing. And if you miss, let's go ahead and do it again. You know, and then but but don't don't you know fill their heads full of oh my god I got a right play, hand placement or you know. Referees got to get practice too, I guess, throwing the flag sometimes. So, so maybe I know a coach wouldn't want me to say it's okay to throw a flag, but I mean, if it's combative, then what do you do? You know, you got to learn from that too. But just go that way instead of maybe catching and things like that. So we'll do, seen, we'll, do a, we'll do a couple more, Alex and Dan. What have you seen from Chandler Savala? Obviously, he was injured at the beginning of training camp. What have you seen from him? Uh, like what? Um, just, he's just working himself back into football shape, and, and he's doing a good job of that. It's nice to have him back out there. How about Chan? Nice to have him, too. He missed a couple of days as well. Yeah, it's nice to have both those young rookies out there and he's contributing played, to practice. He played a lot of snaps in college. Did, did you see, does that show that experience, or is it um, different? I, you know, I, I mean, he's... I don't know, you know. I mean, it's such a different. That's such a different offense they run up there, and everything is so angle, angle, angle oriented. So he's had to learn to adjust to some of those things. But certainly the experience and and hey, look. I mean, it, what did they win four out of five years? He's already won national championship or something. I mean, it's that, that's that's pretty cool to have that in your room too. You know, that's neat. Darren, last question. You, you had the opportunity the other day to catch up with Aaron, and he had many kind things to say about you after that oh. practice. What, what's it like catching up with a guy like that that you've known for so long, for so many years? Um, you mean just to see him personally? Um, but I, I see him sometimes in the off season too, so I talk with him frequently. So, but it's nice to see him, you know, of course. And he likes to poke fun at me, so he, he gets his jabs in. I think. I think he was mic'd up or something, so it's hard. I can't. I just try to stay away a lot of times and that kind of stuff because he's pretty. He's a pretty good prankster, but no, it's good to see him. So was he buttering you up, trying to say all these nice things about you in front of us? Oh, I don't know. That's I don't. I don't. I don't know. Why did he say nice things? Okay. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> exactly. That's like family. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He is. I, I love him. He's. He's a. He's a better man than he's a quarterback. Trust me when I tell you that. There's no question. Yes, ma'am. See ya. Yep.